last shout with a difference tonight. Uh, we're joined in it by the 1991 Norm Smith medalist. Please make him welcome. Paul Deere, everybody. <laughs> Mate, lovely to see you. It's been a long time. Yeah. 30 years ago to the 91 grand final. Does it, is it hard to believe it was that, that much time's passed since you were the best player on the ground in the grand final? Uh, yeah, you know, 30, you sort of forget how quickly time flies by, don't you? But, um, yeah, no, it was a pretty good day, that one. Out at Waverley, Paul, did any, any you know, hint of regret that it wasn't at the G? It was the only no, I, I love Waverley as a footy. Yeah. It was my favourite favourite ground to, to play on, a big open space, plenty of room to run. So, you know, it really, you know, Waverley was perfect, so... My favourite car park to get stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really was. To be, was to be judged the best player in that team on grand final day is an unbelievable feather in your cap. There were champions all over the place in that footy team. So that was 30 years ago. 12 months ago, your life took a bit of a turn. Paul, can you tell us what happened? Yeah, well, um, yeah, well, actually, this day, 12 months ago, I was um, <clears throat> diagnosed with uh, pancreatic cancer. Right, OK. Yeah, so, yeah, it was a bit of a shock to the system. It's not a good one to get. No, no. Out, of, out of... I'm sort of learning out of all the cancers, that's probably the nastiest it's one. It's not good. No, because it's... Um, unfortunately, with, with pancreatic cancer, you, you don't know you got it until it's too late, effectively. So, yeah. when I was diagnosed, I was, uh, you know, diagnosed stage four. Yeah, so it had already gone into the liver and the spleen. Um, and so they basically classed it inoperable, incurable. Yep. And, uh, you know, you go see the oncologist and he said, right, you know, this is, this is the journey you've got and then we'll start you on palliative chemo. She so, whiz. And I said, oh, that's fine. Uh, uh, how, do we, so how do we fix this? And they yeah. go, no, nah, no options. Must have been some scary moments in the last 12 uh, months. Yeah, look, it was. You know, after the initial shock, you sort of, you know, you take a breath and you, you sit down and you go, well, what's next? And, uh, you know, I was... I was probably really fortunate to have, um, you know, marry my wife, Cherie, who uh, we made her the CEO of My Health. And uh, so she, she got to work. She's, um, you know, she, she'll kick down doors. She'll do anything to yep. uh, get what's needed. And uh, so she basically put a plan together and, um, you know, put together a really strong medical team. Um, and, you know, things are looking OK at the moment. Jeez, you know geez, you've gone through a few CEOs, haven't you? <laughs> 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 You're a year down the track. Even that is promising. How are you... Um, as you say, this is a nasty, nasty cancer. What... Where are you at? How are you feeling? You look well, great. You yeah, look, no, you look, I'm, Yeah. Well, you know, ironically, and I, you know, I say this to my mates, I'm, I'm probably physically feeling the best I have for a long time. You know, because you really... You know, when, you, when you're given a terminal illness, you, you, you suddenly look at everything you need to do and, and, you know, you start to look after your body a bit better, um, start to eat properly, sleep properly, do everything right. But... Um, I suppose I was really fortunate that, um, you know, as you go through this journey, you know, you, you always look for positives yep. and you always look for hope because, you know, when you're first diagnosed, you know, when you're told it's an inoperable, um, incurable, and then you get onto, you know, Dr Google and you start looking at the stats, it's pretty frightening. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I think the stats yeah. are, you know, only 30% survive 12 months and it's down to sort of 10% yeah. five years. So, so it's a battle, but... Um, I started doing some... Uh, some of the tumours had sort of grown to a size where they were starting to block off some of the major veins in my body. Um, so I... <clears throat> you know, I think it was May, June, I started to have some major bleeds. Yep. And, uh, you know, a bit of fun, you know. <laughs> get, get to go in the <laughs> so you, you found out about... You found out about pancare, and this is why you wanted to come on. Yeah. To, to, so others know about it. That, Tell what, us about it. Yeah. yeah, well, basically I was lucky that uh, my wife had hunted down um, uh, Professor... Uh, Murdad Nick Fargem, who's a um, upper GI surgeon, and we went and saw him because he'd he'd done some um, research and he'd started pancare, and um, he sort of had a look at my my situation and said, look, you know, we'll see what happens over the journey, but you know, there may be an opportunity we can operate on you. And um, when I started to get these massive bleeds internally, it became the only option I yeah, had. Yeah. So he um, he, he um, Murdad operated on me, and you know. He, he, I had to be sort of moved from ICU, from one hospital to the ICU to the next hospital so he could get his hands on me, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, he, he did a good job. He took out, you know, he, he took about five kilos off me, I think. <laughs> so what can we do? That, that's that's yeah. the place to go if people want to know more about it. Is there a way that people can get Yeah, involved? absolutely. So Pancare's all about building awareness around yeah. um, about pancreatic cancer and upper GI because, you know, as I said before... You don't know you got it until it's too late. Yeah, right. And so it's it's all around building awareness, but also you know creating um, building some funds for 
um, for research, to try to get some, some research into early detection. Um, and, and also, you know, Pancare's got a strong advocacy group that, um, you know, works with, with patients um, who don't have, you know, someone like my wife, Cherie, yeah, who right. can pull it all together and they yeah. sort of work with customers because the medical system is, you know, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling when, you, when, you, when you're trying to work through it with the terminal illness. Yeah. So, yeah, so, look, we've got a, um, you know, Pancare's got a um, uh, Unite for Hope uh, walk-on um, in October. Um, we, we've got a team together, so, look, just get, on, get online. Um, and, and support it because Great. I just got to build well awareness said. out there. Yep. Well Good done, mate. Well done. Well said. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's wonderful to have you in. We, we're very lucky on this show that we get to speak to you know some of the greats. By the no, way, yep. you know, there's so many different levels. You some play the game, some play in premierships, and then some some win the Norm Smith Medal. You, you've very done rare. something that <laughs> yeah. uh, not many have done. Yep. Of course, it's a big day. Uh, you get there, you get the medal. Uh, the microphone is given to you. So many people are thankful. <laughs> <laughs> What can I say? It's just a dream come true. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the best speech I've ever heard. Right, there it is. Just move it along. You could have taken your mouth guard out. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought it would be. Well, you're, trying to be you're trying to beat the traffic, where? Is that... <laughs> well, you're trying to get out of the VFL it's car. It's probably the reason why I never had a media career. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, great to see you looking so well. Um, you're an inspiration. Uh, good luck with everything. We're Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.